this lesson, we're going to continue our look at the volume of some three-dimensional shapes, but specifically shapes that cannot be considered as prisms, which we've already dealt with in a previous lesson. It'll be assumed that you have looked at that lesson if you continue, as we may refer to certain topics that have been covered in that lesson. There are several main shapes that are important when talking about the volume of mathematical shapes. In this lesson, we will look at the volumes of spheres, cones, frustums, and pyramids. A sphere is the name we give a shape that is perfectly round in three dimensions, such as a ball. As you'll realize, it has many uses in the fields of sport, engineering, architecture, art, and a host of other pursuits. As such, in math, we need to be able to calculate the volume of a sphere. I bet that you can guess that the constant pi will be involved some way in the formula. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times pi times r cubed, where r is the radius of the sphere the distance from the center of the sphere to any point in the surface. A cone is a shape that tapers from a circular base up to a point. It is exactly what you would expect a cone to be if you thought of an ice cream cone, without the ice cream on top, of course, and it turned upside down. Since a cone starts from a circular base, guess what? Pi is again involved. The volume of a cone is calculated as one third pi r squared times the height of the cone, where r is the radius of the base of the cone, and h is the perpendicular height from the base to the top of the cone. A frustum is the shape that is formed if we take a normal cone and cut a piece off the top. The shape we are left with is almost like a 3D trapezium. The volume of this shape does not have a specific formula, and we calculate its volume by starting with the volume of the original cone, then subtracting the volume of the smaller piece that has been cut off from the top, which is also a cone. As a cone is symmetrical, figure to begin with, the piece that has been removed from the top is simply a smaller cone shape. As such, we calculate the volume of the frustum by taking the volume of the big cone and then subtracting the volume of the smaller cone. The difference in the two volumes relates to the different radii and heights of the two cones. Finally, a pyramid is a shape similar to the cone where a base of some type of polygon rises and tapers to a point. The most common type of pyramid is a rectangular base pyramid where the base is in the shape of a rectangle and the four sides that slant up to a single point or vertex. However, strictly speaking, a pyramid can have a base with a shape that has many sides, such as a hexagon or an octagonal base. The principle to calculate the volume again has similarities with the volume of a cone. The volume of a pyramid is one third the base area times the height of the shape from its base. The similarity of this formula with the volume of a cone is that in both cases, the volume is one third of the base area times the height. The only difference between two shapes is a cone's base is always a circle and a pyramid's base is always a polygon of some sort. We encourage you to try as many questions on this topic as you can so that you can become very familiar with the different volume formulae that we've mentioned in this lesson. I hope this has been helpful and thanks for watching.